Hello my friends, welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vebel Vintage Designs. I just came back from a trip to Lake George, New York, where they had these golden poppies growing everywhere and they were so bright and cheerful that I felt very inspired to paint them. So you can see that I photographed them and I printed out the image. I took a pencil scribbled on the back and I transferred the image onto my watercolor paper by tracing it. And for this painting, I decided to use my ink tense pencils because the color is so vibrant and I thought it would be perfect for this painting. So now that I've traced the image, I'm using a kneadable eraser as opposed to a regular eraser because it's much more gentle on the surface of the paper. And because I'm using yellow, I wanted to make sure that my pencil lines would not be visible after I finished my painting. And the way I'm using these ink tense pencils today is by scribbling the colors that I've selected for my painting on a piece of scrap paper. And then I use a clean damp brush to activate the color and transfer it onto my paper. So the colors that I'm using are sun yellow, sienna gold, tangerine, apple green, felt green and then later on I'll be using iron on green as well. So you can see that I picked up the sunny yellow and I have painted that color all over the entire petal. I'm painting one petal at a time and while the petal is still wet I'm using a combination of sienna gold and tangerine to add the shadow or what I see in my reference photo and because the petal is wet those colors will blend nicely into the yellow that I first applied. Now there's many ways to use these ink tense pencils, but this is the way I prefer to use them because I feel I have much more control by scribbling them on a piece of scrap paper and then just picking the color up like I would from um, my watercolor pan paints. This is very, very similar to using your typical watercolor. The difference between ink tense pencils and watercolor is that once it's dry, it is permanent. You might be able to use an eradicator brush to do a little bit of lifting, but what's the, be the best part about it is that when you want to add a second layer or a third or a fourth layer, it does not activate the paint that you previously applied. And sometimes with watercolor, when you're applying layers, you can disturb the color um, underneath and actually end up lifting color. And that doesn't happen with the ink tense pencils. So you can add multiple layers without disturbing or lifting the previously applied layers. So here I am using a combination of sienna gold, tangerine, and I even added a little bit of the felt green to create the shadows that are cast from the stamen in the center of the flower. I use, also use this combination to create uh, the shadow in between the stamen. So now that I've added the first layer to those first two petals, I'm using the apple green and the felt green to create the stem of my flower. I'm using the apple green over the entire stem and then I'm picking up the felt green and going along one side to create a shadow. And because the, the um, stem is still wet, that felt green will blend nicely into the apple green and create a nice shadow effect. And the leaves for these flowers are really pretty and interesting. It's got one long stem and then shorter stems branching off from it. And then it has these finger-like leaves. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I did freehand draw these and now I'm just going over them with the paint using a size 4 brush. I'm using the tip of the brush to create these little leaves. Really easy, very simple. And you can see that I'm going in between the two colors to create a little depth into these uh, leaves so that they don't look flat. 
and later on once they're dry I will be using the color Ionon Green which is a darker grayer green to add a little bit more shadow and interest. So prior to my vacation to Lake George, I was in a painting rut. I had no desire to paint. Um, I felt like I was forcing myself to paint and that happens to me now and then. I'm sure it happens to everyone. And usually I have solutions to uh, rid myself of that feeling. But uh, my favorite one, going to an art supply store, is not always feasible or affordable. So. Thank goodness for this vacation because I saw so many beautiful flowers and so many beautiful things that I felt very inspired and I couldn't wait to come back home to start painting. Sometimes you just need a change of scenery uh, to feel inspired and to get rid of that rut. So getting back to the painting, now that the two first petals are dry, I'm painting in my third petal and I'm picking up a little bit of that sienna gold and dropping it in where I see it in my reference photo. And as I mentioned earlier, once the paint is dry, it becomes permanent. So you can't reactivate it. So I do have the pencils in front of me and you'll see me adding a little bit more to my scrap paper here and there so that I can um, continue painting. So now I'm adding, this is all the first layer. You'll see I'll, I'll be adding multiple layers just to intensify the color and add a little bit more definition here and there. So again, I'm picking up the Sienna Gold while this petal is still wet and I'm adding a little bit of detail, the folds and uh, ripples or ruffles that I see in the petals. And you can see nothing crazy. I'm just using the tip of my brush and swiping at the tip of the petal. And you can see how nicely it creates that fold. Now there's a shadow in this area, but I want my color to be very intense. So you saw me scribble a little bit there on my scrap paper, but I want the color to be even more intense. So in a moment, you'll see that I am going to pick up the pencil and lift the color right from the pencil instead of my scrap. Because I want more definition and I want the color again to be a little bit more intense. And here I'm adding a little bit of cast shadow because you can see that the top and the bottom petal are laying over the side petals. So I'm creating a little bit of shadow and you can see here I'm lifting the color right from the pencil and applying it to my paper and then I'm using a clean damp brush to run along the side to soften that edge so it blends into the rest of the petal. But you can see by doing this that I've instantly set that petal back. You can see that there's a petal laying on top of it. So this is a cast shadow from the stamen in the center of the flower. I'm just refining that little shadow there. And now I'm picking up the sun yellow to paint in the stamen and I wanted this to be really bright. That's why I'm used, picking up the color straight from the pencil. And later on, I'll use a combination of the Sierra Gold and the Tangerine to add a little bit of shadow to each part of the stamen. 
Now while the stamen is still wet, I'm adding a little bit of the tangerine for a little bit of shadow, but I will further define it once it's dry. Now I'm picking up the ion green and I'm adding a little bit more detail and more shadow to the stem as well as the leaves. I'm making sure that the part of the stem that is just underneath that petal is a little bit darker because that petal would be casting a shadow in that area. So I've just added a little bit more depth in that area. And you can see here I'm using the tip of the brush and just adding a little bit of shadow here and there. Just to make the petals, uh, the, rather the leaves a little bit more interesting and make them stand out and not look so flat. I'm also giving the petals some time to dry because you'll see in a little bit, I'll go back and add more detail to the um, to each of the petals. And now you can see I've picked up the color straight from the pencil and I'm creating a little definition in between the stamen simply by a drawing or rather painting a fine line underneath each one. And now I'm defining the edges of my petals simply by using my smaller brush to go around. And now I've scribbled a little bit more of the Sienna Gold and I'm adding even more detail. And my paper at this point is dry. So you can see that my lines are a little bit sharper. And then if you want to soften them, you can just clean your brush off, use a clean damp brush and run it along the side and it will soften that edge for you. Now I'm adding a little bit more cast shadow on that side leaf uh, petal by simply picking up the color, adding it along that edge, and then using a clean damp brush to soften it so that it blends into the rest of that flower petal. Now I'm just adding a little bit more detail here and there, wherever I think I need it. Signing it. And then I later decided that I wanted to intensify the yellow of the uh, petals. So you'll see that I will go over each of the petals with the uh, sun yellow, just to brighten it up a little bit more. Here I'm just defining the stamen a little bit. You can see I'm adding the sun yellow, making sure that my petals are completely dry. And then I'm just glazing over each of the petals with a more sun, sun yellow. And you can see how much it brightens it up. That's what I love about these ink tense pencils. They are very bright. Again, the color is intense and you can do multiple layers without disturbing the layers underneath and they are so much fun to use. And there's so many different ways to use them. You give them a try, I'm sure you'll find what way works best for you. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you give this a try. If you have any questions regarding any of the techniques or products that you've seen me use here, please leave it in the comments. I'll always get back to you. Check the description box for links to all the products used in case you have any questions or would like to purchase them for yourself. Also, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.